Romans 3, 19 through 31. And let's all stand out of respect to God's word, Romans 3, 19 through 31. Follow with me as I read. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. By now, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believe in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that, that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God, which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for this part of the Bible, for this wonderful truth we're going to talk about. Please help us open our hearts to what you have to say to us. And so we enjoy this truth, help us to, to see how what we should do with it and how we should uh, live out this truth each day before you. And Lord, I, if there's anybody here who does not know your son is their personal Savior, they're not sure they're going to heaven when they die, please help them today. Help them to see that they can have this wonderful gift of eternal life that you sent your son to purchase for them. Help the Christian here to decide they're going to go follow you and live for you. Be with the kids downstairs, help them receive what the man of God has to say to them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. It's a blessing, the great truth in that song, something John the Baptist said in John chapter, or John said in John chapter 3. I think it was John the Baptist, he said that. Anyway, we're going to talk today, this, this morning, about a, a topic that I'm excited about. I'm excited because it applies to me, and uh, it applies to you too if you're saved. And if you're not saved, it can't apply to you, because it was done for you. But uh, we saw a few, a few times in our reading in chapter 3 uh, about the, the word justified, or justification, and um, and we're going to talk about that this morning. I'm going to talk. I'm going to teach you about it. Give give you several verses about it, and then I'm going to show you what what how it applies to you today. What you should do with this, okay? Because that's that's really important. So let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Lord, for the Bible. Help us to listen carefully to this wonderful truth and enjoy it, and then do something about it when we're done with enjoying it. In Jesus' name, Amen. Go to Romans, uh, <clears throat> Romans chapter 3, keep your Bible open there, but also we're going to look to several other verses. The Bible says in Psalm 51, Psalm 51, uh, that we, uh, that I am a sinner. It tells me that really clear, uh, way back in the Old Testament. Psalm 51, have, uh, David said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. So the Bible in this passage here confirms what it says throughout the rest of the Bible, that I am a sinner. Paul said, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. He said that in 1 Timothy 1.15. I cannot pay for my sins the way I live. All right, I cannot do that. I cannot pay for this, my sins the way I live. My sins cancel out my good deeds. I was born uh, with a sinful nature. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, it says this, Wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Jesus, on the other hand, was born with a perfect nature. I was born with a sinful nature, he was born with a perfect nature. Jesus has always existed and has always been perfect. The Bible says the penalty placed on me for the sins I commit is death in hell. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. I have, before I'm saved, a record up in heaven. On that record is everything I've ever done wrong. I'm, I'm talking about me, but I'm also talking about you. God doesn't record the good I do because as far as he's concerned, I don't do anything good. 
Romans chapter 3. Now, this is before I'm saved. Romans 3.12 says, They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. It says that in, in that verse, and then way back in Psalm 14.3, it says, uh, They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. One, you might say, well, I think I'm, a ba ba I'm basically a good person. Well, I just want to let you know God disagrees with you, okay? Isaiah 64, verse 6, he says it like this. We are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. That's what the Bible says. So from the time I was old enough to understand what sin was, until March of 1979, I had compiled a long record. It looked hopeless. I needed help, or I was doomed for hell. John 3, 18, in John chapter 3, in verse 18, the Bible says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And up to that point, I had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God, and I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, so I was condemned already for everything I had done up to that point. Now, God had created me to fellowship with him, to enjoy me on this earth and in heaven. My sins had ruined that. God's justice had to take over. The wages of sin is death. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. He had to punish me for my sins unless somehow... I could be justified. So Jesus came down to earth and lived a perfect life for 33 years. He then goes to the cross to be punished for my imperfections or for my sins. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18, the Bible just puts it like this. It says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. He might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. This just man, he had never sinned, dies for the unjust man, covered with sins. That's me. So he could bring me to God, and so God could then look at me. He exchanges his righteousness or perfection for my unrighteousness or imperfection. When I agree with that exchange and believe that that exchange is my only hope for heaven, then I receive his perfect record in place of my imperfect record, and I am justified. I must believe that this exchange is solely a gift from him without any effort on my part except to receive it. I am then pardoned of the guilt of all my sins. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 says this, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So I must believe that this exchange is solely a gift from him without any effort on my part except to receive it. Once I receive it, I am then pardoned of the guilt of all my sins. Once a person is justified in God's sight, he can never be guilty again. I can never be blamed for my sins again before God. This is the Bible doctrine of justification. Now, here's what, here's what I said. Jesus is perfect. No sin. I am, Im, am imperfect, covered with sin. Jesus lives a perfect life. Jesus dies for my sins, for my imperfections, and gives me his righteousness. I accept him as my Savior, and I, am, I become perfect or righteous before God as far as my eternal standing goes. I become justified before God. <clears throat> this is the Bible doctrine of justification. My record in heaven is just as if I never sinned. I want to give you some things about justification. Romans chapter 3, we read in verse 20, Therefore by, all, by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. In verse number 24, it says, uh, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 26, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Verse 28, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith 
without the deeds of the law. Verse 30, seeing he, it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. You see, I cannot justify myself. He does the justify. Now, let me give you some things about this, about this doctrine of justification. Justification does not mean sinless perfection while I'm here on earth. The rest of my time here. It means the penalty is paid for my sins. I will never go to hell for my past, present, or future sins. But I can lose rewards for uncon unconfessed present or future sins. 1 Corinthians 3, 11 through 15 teach, teaches that. So they'll still affect you. They can't affect you for all eternity as far as you go into hell or heaven anymore once you accept Christ because you're justified. But you can <clears throat> lose your rewards if you hold on to the sins you commit after you're saved, which is crazy. Why would you want to do that? Here's some scriptures about justification. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4 verse 5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Verse 25 of Romans 4. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. You see, that's, the Bible makes it clear that Jesus did all these things and justification is totally of God, not of you. In Micah chapter 7, Micah chapter 7, in the, one of the minor prophets, Micah chapter 7, it talks about this. In Micah chapter 7, let me get there. It's one of those books that you have a hard time finding. Um, Micah chapter 7, verse 19, 18 and 19. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and I will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Sin is a disastrous thing, but God delights in forgiving the sincere person. In Acts chapter 13, Acts chapter 13, verse 38, Acts 13 and verse 38, <clears throat> and the Bible talks here about justification, Acts 13, verse 38, be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Justification involves forgiveness and removal of guilt and punishment. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. No condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus and are justified. In Romans 3, 22, we read this verse earlier. It says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Justification involves the righteousness or perfection of Christ being given to every single sinner that comes to him for salvation. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 11, it says, He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. That's what the Bible says. I am justified. Justification, justification comes by faith only. By faith only. Go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16. What a wonderful, exciting truth this is to know that I am justified before God. When I got saved, he exchanged the righteousness of Jesus for my unrighteousness, and he justified me. Galatians 2.16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. That's what God said in Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. That's what the Bible says. Romans 1, 17, it says it again. The just shall live by faith. Romans chapter 3, verse 26, again. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. And verse 28, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Romans 4, 3, 
For what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now, you compare that, those verses I just read about how justification is by faith, and it's all of God. You compare that with, for instance, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 1. Galatians chapter 2, I'm sorry, Galatians 2.21. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for his righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 4, for Christ, Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. That means you have no part of grace if you're trying to be justified by the law. By the way, we've just read several scriptures that says you cannot be justified by the works of the law. You see that? It is it is, if it's faith and works, Christ died for nothing. <laughs> but it is clearly taught in the Bible that it is of faith only. Faith in Jesus Christ. Faith in what he did. Why? Because he lived a righteous life we did not and cannot. Romans chapter 8 and verse 33, that's why it's all on him. Romans chapter 33, 8, Romans 8, 33 says, um, Who shall anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. You see that? It, is a, it comes as a gift, and it's through God's grace. He did it all. Romans 3, 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Titus chapter 3 and verse 7. Titus chapter 3, verse 7. The Bible says here that just being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. We are justified. It says it's comes as a gift to us, and it's through the grace of God. It's through God's influence on us that we wound up getting justified. If it wasn't for what he did in my life, I would never have even thought about this. It's through the blood. Romans chapter 5, verse number 9. Romans chapter 5 and verse number 9. The Bible says, more, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. It's the shedding of his blood that made it possible, because without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. And if we can't get our sins forgiven, we can't be justified. So it's because it's through his blood that we are able to do this, when it's able to happen to us. Romans 4.25, he was raised again for our justification. He was raised again so we could be justified. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 17, 1 Corinthians 15.17, and the Bible says here, and Christ, if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. So the re this, this comes we, without the resurrection. This, none of this could happen either. So it comes as a gift. It's through his grace. It's through his blood and his resurrection that we are able to be justified. If you, if you are saved this morning, you've trusted Christ as your Savior, you are justified in the sight of God. That's amazing. You don't deserve it. I don't deserve it either. We deserve to go to hell and pay for our sins, not be justified, but because of him, we are. Now, good works is an evident, evidence and a result of being justified. It does not justify you. Your works don't justify you, but good works are an evidence and result of being justified. If you're saved, you have a hunger to want to live right. Go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. If you're saved... You have a hunger to want to live right. What shall we then say, say that Abraham our father is pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof the glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So Abraham looked forward to the coming promise of the Messiah, and he put his faith in the coming Messiah to save him. And so it was counted unto him for righteousness. Not him that worketh his reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. <clears throat> and, uh, and then God, God goes on and talks about, about Abraham's faith. Now, but then also, if you're, so if you're saved, you have a hunger and a thirst to live right because you're saved. You want that righteousness that's in you. You want it to come out into your life and show in your life. If you're saved, the only way people will know it's in you is by what you do. Okay? You don't keep it private. James 2, 21 through 26 makes it clear that when you're saved, you don't keep it private. It comes out in your works to prove that your faith is real and it's alive. It comes out in your life. You see, 
Now, you don't keep it private. You know, people who don't want to show others Jesus usually don't have him. And that's the truth. You see, we're talking about, okay, think about this, folks. I'm talking this morning about a work of God in your life. Not a work of religion. Not a work of personal reformation. But a work of the God of heaven in your life. He comes into you, and when, when he saves you, and he justifies you, and when that happens, you're going to want to show him that to other people. Yep. Peace with God is another evidence of being justified. Go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. <clears throat> it is evidence, evident by the change in my life and the way I live, that's my works, that something has happened to me, and that something was I was justified in the sight of God. I'm not guilty anymore for my sins. I'm not going to hell for my sins anymore. Jesus took care of all that. Romans chapter 5, therefore being justified by faith, watch this, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? Peace is an evidence of being justified. The Bible goes on and says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. You see, peace with God is an evidence of being justified. And because we have this peace with God, and it's because the Holy Ghost is in us, and he came in us because of what Jesus did for us, because of all this, we rejoice. We're not guilty anymore. You ought to rejoice. You ought to be excited. You're not guilty anymore. You should be guilty. You should be condemned to hell. In fact, you ought to be in hell right now. And so should I. But you're not. Instead, instead, you have your names written in the book of life. Amen. Your sins are forgiven. You'll never face this, your sins anymore, past, present, or future, as far as your penalty goes. Yep. You'll never have to pay for that anymore. You are as sure for heaven as if you were already there. You don't deserve that. Neither do I. You see? And then on top of that, you get the Holy Ghost. And because the Holy Ghost is in you, you have a desire to want to, and a hunger to want to live right according to what the Bible says. And it's not a selfish motive anymore. It's not because you want to be better than somebody else. It's not because you want to get to heaven. No, you want to live right because you're saved and because you want to show God you're grateful for what you've done, for what he's done for you. You know that you can rejoice. I'm not talking about being happy. Yeah, we're, we are, even unsaved people are happy. You know, there were a lot, there was a lot of laughter this past week in the unsaved people's homes too. Yeah. And they're happy that Christmas is coming. They're looking forward to all that they do at Christmas with their families. They're going to laugh just like we're going to laugh and enjoy people and enjoy the time like we are. But we have something they don't have. We have joy. We can laugh inside our heart. We can smile inside our heart no matter how bad life gets. We have the joy of the Lord, and we can rejoice in something that's real. You know why we have, can rejoice? We can rejoice about things that are never going to end. They're excited about something that's coming, but it's going to be over. We're excited about something that's happening, and something that's coming, which is heaven, that's never going to end. You see, we, have, we can rejoice. We rejoice in the midst of trials. And you know what? The Bible says in this passage we read that God's love is shed abroad in our hearts. The word shed, phrase shed abroad means gushing out. Gushing out. Gushing out to others. The love that we show people is real love. It's God's love. It's not fake and phony. Let your love be without dissimulation. Dissimulation means hypocrisy. You don't have hypocritical love anymore. You don't have selfish love anymore. You don't have conditional love anymore. You have God's love. The pure, clean, <clears throat> unconditional love of God. 
shed abroad in you to come out and show in the lives of others. You know, there was a song long ago, back in the 60s, it's right around the, the assassinations of Kennedy, Robert Kennedy and, um, and Martin Luther King Jr. And what, somebody came out with a song about that what the world needs now is love, sweet love. And my, I heard that song over and over again. My mother played it over and over and over again. That's why it's still in my mind. But the world, the world, yeah, the world needed that, but they didn't need the love they were talking about. They didn't love this is talking about. Real love. The real love of God is what we need. And we have that. We can show that to people. What the world really needs, we have, folks. And it's supposed to be gushing out of us. All because we're justified. Justification is a blessing. Justification is a blessing to us. And we ought to enjoy the blessing. We really ought to. All right? Look at verse 6 of Romans 4. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are cut forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Boy, we ought to enjoy this blessing of, of the fact that sin is not going to be charged to us anymore. Wow. If we really would think about this, if we really would think about what he's done for us, it would bring happiness to us. It'd be a real blessing. And you know what? Now nobody, nobody can condemn us. Nobody. Go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. You know what? Nobody can condemn us anymore. It doesn't matter. I, you know, if, if you really believe what we're talking about this morning, you believe in this doctrine of justification, the teaching in the Bible of being justified, and we often has been put, I've heard this it put this way, just as if I'd never sinned, justified. If you really believe that's what the Bible teaches, nobody can condemn you. You can even hear people say, well, you know what? If you don't live right, you'll lose your salvation. I've heard people say that to me. They can't, you're not going to condemn me. I can't lose something. I can't lose something God gave me that he's never going to take away. No one can condemn me no matter what. They can't condemn me anymore. I'm not condemned. And you know what? This doctrine of justification, it excludes all boasting. We're not going to boast about ourselves. You know, you know, and when you really get a hold of this doctrine, you stop to talk of, well, I think I'm a pretty good person. Mm -hmm. Romans 3.27, the Bible says this. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. It is excluded. It's gone. We don't boast anymore. Why? We know it's all of God. We know God did all this. We didn't do anything. We didn't do a thing. It was all God that did this. Romans 4.2 says, For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. It'd be all on him. He'd be glory about the works that he did. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 29 and 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 29. The Bible says, There shall no flesh, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Verse 31, that according as, as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. You see, this is all because of God. Now, am I justified by keeping the law? Can I be justified by how I live? What does the Bible say? Well, Romans chapter 2, verse 13 says this. Romans chapter 2, verse 13. Let me add to what I've been saying. Romans 2, 13. For, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law are shall be justified. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do but things contained in the law, these things have not, having not the law are a law unto themselves. So here, the doers of the law shall be justified. But here's the thing about that, see. You say, well, if I do the law, I'll be justified. Yeah, if you can keep it perfectly, you're justified. Now, the problem with that is, James chapter 2, verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. That's the end of that one. 
You mean I can be justified if I just obey everything in the Bible? Yep. You sure can. But if you break one, you're guilty of all. Wow. That ended for me the first day I sinned. I couldn't be justified by the work, my works anymore. It was all done with that. <clears throat> no one can be justified because no one can keep the law. Nobody. It can't happen. Now, go to Job 25.4. I'm almost finished here. Job 25.4. Job chapter 25, verse 4. The Bible says here, How then can a man be justified with God? How can he be clean that is born of women? Good question. Really good question. Go to Psalm 130, verse 3. Psalm 130, verse 3. If a man sins, how can he be justified before God? What's he going to do? Psalm 130, verse 3. If thou, Lord, shouldst mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? If he marks down our sins, who can stand before him? I can't. You know how long my record is? If God marks my sins. You know how long my record is? Wow, it's embarrassing. It's, it's scary. It's embarrassing. It's shameful. My record is huge. Absolutely huge. Psalm 143, verse 2. And enter not into the judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. That's what David said to God. In God's sight shall no man living be justified. Why, why no man? Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In Romans chapter 3, listen to what it says here, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. In fact, the Bible says in verse 19, every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. So are we justified by keeping the law? Is that how we can take care of our sins? I mean, we can't go to heaven without being justified. Are we going to do that by keeping the law? Romans chapter 9, verse 30 says, What shall we say then, that the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness have, at have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. <clears throat> See, no one can get there. No one can get there. Um, wherefore, because they sought it not by faith. See, that's people have tried and tried and tried. And religions are trying, trying, trying to get this righteousness so they can get to heaven. But they didn't seek it by faith. That's how you get it. You get it by faith. Faith in what? Faith in not in your righteousness, but faith in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. What he did for you on the cross. You can't keep the law. You can't, you can't form your own righteousness by keeping the law. I keep doing the law. I keep doing the law. I keep doing the law. So I'm becoming more righteous, more righteous, more righteous. No. No, you can't do that. You break one law, you offend in all, of, all points of the law. Yep. See? So the only way to be justified is by faith in Jesus Christ. That's it. Okay? That's what the Bible says. I'm going to read you a couple more verses about that. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Let me say it again. Therefore, being justified by faith. That's how you get it. Okay? That's the only way you're going to get it. A classic verse, I read it earlier, I'm going to read it again. Puts it so clear. Galatians 2.16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. Watch this. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Nobody. Not you, not your, your sweet little old grandmother. Your, your, grand, your honest grandfather had all the integrity and morals that they had way back then. No, they won't be justified. No flesh shall be justified by the works of the law. That includes the Pope and all the people that were before him. That includes every preacher, every, every Christian school teacher, every Christian parent. It doesn't matter who you are, what you've done. You're not going to be justified by the works of the law. It doesn't happen. You're only justified by faith in Jesus Christ. Why? Because you're a sinner. He wasn't. He lived a perfect life. He lived a righteous life. And you need his righteousness to get to heaven. Why? Because his righteousness is a perfect righteousness, without flaw, without sin. And when you put your faith in him, he makes a trade. 
He says, I'll trade your record for my record. I'll give you my righteousness. I'll take your unrighteousness, which is your sins, and I'll pay for those. And you take my righteousness, and you know, now you're justified. That's what you got to do. And it's all done by faith when you receive him as your Savior. But let me just say this. So I did that. I took care of that in March of 1979. When did you take care of that? When did you put your faith in Jesus Christ to save you and give you eternal life? When did you do that? Do you remember where you were at? If you don't remember where you're at, it could be you didn't do it. And you need to do it today. You don't have to remember the date necessarily, but you all remember that what was going on in your life at that time. You all remember what, what, your life was go, what your life was like, and you don't need to at least know <coughs> where you were when you did that. See? Now, so I did that, and now I'm justified. I will never go to hell. I will never pay the penalty for my sins anymore. At all. So does that cancel out the law in my life? Does that mean I don't have to keep the law anymore? Well, we read in Romans chapter 3 and verse 30, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. We establish it. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 21. I'm going to explain to you in a minute what I'm talking about. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 21 says this, to them that are without law as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ. Okay, <clears throat> so Paul knew he was under the law to Christ, not for salvation. But you don't throw the law away because you get saved. You establish the law. All right, now the law, I mean, before I got saved, I'm trying, trying to live right, trying to live right, I'm trying to get to heaven and trying to keep the law of God, trying to obey his commandments, and man, it just up and down, up and down, can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. Oh, man, this is frustrating. But that's the reason God gave me the law. One of the reasons he gave me the law is a schoolmaster. It was to show me that I was a sinner and I couldn't, I couldn't obey, and I needed a Savior. He had to teach me that. And it was obvious to me when somebody showed me that, my good, my, that all sinners go to hell, that I was definitely in that category because I had sinned against God. Then I got saved. Now the law is established in my life. Now I'm taking this book and the laws, commandments of God in this book and using and doing it, living it, not because, not to get saved, but because I am saved. And now it establishes what I want to do. I want to show God I love him. If you, obey, if you love me, keep my commandments. See, it doesn't cancel out the law at all. You don't throw the Bible away and the commands in the Bible just because you justify. Just because you'll never go to hell for your sins anymore doesn't mean the Bible doesn't apply. The laws of God don't mean a thing. No. They ought to be established. They ought to be sound and strong in your life. It shows you what to live by. It's a guidepost to show you what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. The do's and the don'ts of your life here on earth. You see, we're supposed to use that. Don't cancel the law in your life. Establish it. Make it strong and solid. This is what I live by. This is what I go by. This is, what I'm, I'm, this is my guide. This is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Can I just tell you, the, the, the Bible being a lamp and a, a, under your feet, a light to your path, is not just to guide you through trials and troubles. It's also to be a guide to show you how to live your life, how to behave. Okay, God, this is a book of behavior. This, I want my kids to know how to behave while they're here on earth. This is it right here. And he give us, gives us the law for us and wants us to keep it in our life <clears throat> because it's, it's going to show us how to do that. So since I trusted Jesus as my Savior, I'm justified. I don't have to worry anymore about death. Nope. I have to worry. Death has no more dominion over me doesn't dominate my thinking anymore. doesn't scare me to die about, because of, I'm worried about where I'm going. I know where I'm going. You see, I'm justified. I don't have to worry about facing my sins 
anymore for, to open up a book and God's going to show me my works, how terrible they were, and he's going to say, depart from me, cursed in everlasting fire. When I read those words in the Bible, I know they don't apply to me anymore because I'm justified. You see, praise the Lord, praise his name. You know, it's amazing. What a, a wonderful thing that he's done for me. And you know what? I think I'll live for him. That's what I think I'll do. I think I'll live for him. I read a verse, I, and again, it's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. 2 Corinthians 5.15, if you can have a favorite verse. Then he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but in him which died for them and rose again. Hey, you know what? I think I'll do that. He did die for me. He did pay for my sins. He did suffer hell for me. He did justify me. He did <laughs> trade my unrighteousness for his righteousness. And now when God the Father looks at me, he doesn't see me. He sees his son. Wow, that's amazing. You know what I'll do? I think I'll live from this time forth. I'll live unto him. Not to myself. Not for myself but for him which died for me and rose again for my justification. Will you do that? Can I challenge you to do that? If you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus as your Savior. If you've been trying to justify yourself, trying to earn your way to heaven, try to get righteous enough to get into heaven, would you stop doing that? Your works won't do it. We just read a lot of verses about that. Your faith in Jesus will do it. When you turn Mary else, you're putting your faith and your trust in and turn to him and trust him as your Savior. Now he will then justify you. The Bible says he's a justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. If you put your faith in him, believe in him, trust him as your Savior, he will justify you. He will trade your unrighteousness for his righteousness. And you will go to heaven when you die. If you, if you haven't done that, will you do that today? Take care of that today before you leave. We're going to have what's called an invitation in just a second. And all you got to do when the song begins, you just walk up here and just tell Brother Kevin, I'd like to see from the Bible how I could be justified, how I could get my sins paid for by Jesus, how I could have my name written in the book of life so I could go to heaven when I die. I want to be justified. Come tell Kevin that. He'll have somebody take the Bible and show you how. But listen, Christian, if you say, well, I've already done that, I'm justified. Well, because you are, have you ever said to him, Thank you for doing that for me. Are you enjoying your justification? The fact that you're just, are you enjoying that on a daily basis? And will you decide this morning to live for him? He died for you. Would you live for him? He justified you. Would you live for him each day of your life? Would you give him your life this morning? Let him take control of your life. Trust him for every day between now and the day you go to heaven. You're trusting him to get there. Would you trust him on the trip there too? Will you do that this morning? Let's pray. Every head bow, every head close. Father, thank you so much for the word of God. Thank you for this marvelous truth, Lord. I, I know I went through it fast and, and gave a lot of scripture and it's just too much to stop, too, not enough time to stop and teach it or go over it or meditate on it like we, sh we really should do sometimes. Just enjoy what this all means. Lord, thank you for the fact that it's true that you did send your son. Jesus, thank you for coming here and paying my penalty and justifying me when I asked you for salvation. Thank you for that. And I stand before you now, God, just as if I've never sinned. And I thank you for that. Wow, it's amazing. All that it involves for now and for the future is just unbelievable. And help me to live for you like I should each day. Heads bowed, eyes closed. How many would say tonight, this morning, Pastor, I, as, I stand, as I sit here this morning, I know I've sinned against God, and I, I know that uh, I know I've got to be forgiven before I can go to heaven. I know that I can't just walk into heaven with my sins. <clears throat> but you know what? I'm not sure how to do that. I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven when I die. I want to be sure, but I'm not sure. If that's you, you raise your hand. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I want to be sure, but I am not sure. Don't be embarrassed. If no one else is raising their hand, you raise your hand anyway. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I'd like to be sure. How many would say, Pastor, I remember you, you, when you said, do you remember where you, you were at? you remember when that happened to you? I do remember. I remember asking Jesus Christ to be my Savior. I remember asking him to take care of my sins for me, pay for my sins so I could go to heaven when I die. 
I receive this gift of eternal life. I know for sure I'm going to heaven. If that's you, you raise your hand. I know for sure I'm going to heaven. You may lower your hands. Just a moment, we're going to have an invitation song, like I said. When the song begins, if you're not sure you're going to heaven, please don't hesitate. Just leave your seat, walk up here to Brother Kevin and say, Kevin, I'd like to see from the Bible how I can be saved from hell, how I can go to heaven when I die. He'll direct you to somebody who will take you aside privately and show you from the Bible how you can be saved, how you can be saved from hell, how you can go to heaven when you die. If you are saved, you've not, not been baptized since you've been saved, that's something you should do now. So it's something God wants you to do. It's a work that he wants you to do because you're saved. Not to get saved, but because you are. If you've not been baptized since you got saved, the Bible way, come up and tell Brother Kevin you'd like to do that today. We'll be glad to baptize you. We have everything ready for that. If you'd like to join the church, come up and tell Brother Kevin I'd like to join the church. But if God spoke to your heart this morning, and you just you have not thanked him at all for your for justifying you, for taking care of all of the sin mess, all of the mess that sin made out of your life, your not only your daily life, but your standing before God and your future after your death. You want to thank you never you haven't thanked God in a long time for taking care of that for you, for justifying you. <clears throat> why don't you come and tell the Lord you're thankful for that? And then why don't you tell him, you know what, Lord, you did all that for me. You did all that for me. I think I'll live for you each day. If you've not surrendered your life to him hundred percent, why don't you decide to do that this morning? All right, let's all stand. You'll obey the Holy Spirit and do what he says.